Hey everybody, coming up next on Sports Central, Jim Grazier, professional swimming superstar. We also have a golf pro in the house, and that is Bob Shade from Cypresswood. Stick around everybody for this edition of Sports Central. Hey everybody and welcome to Sports Central. I'm Mark Jackson. The gentleman to my right, Mr. Neil Duncan. Yes, nice sir. to do the, you know, having it's, you here this week. It's been a week. long time since we've done the show together, so I'm looking forward to this show. It'll be fun. Yeah, what's wrong with your voice? <clears throat> I don't know. It's going out right now. Uh, just, <laughs> 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 had a rough night last night? No, <laughs> no. no. Just, maybe I'm allergic to being in the same set with you. Oh, yeah, I hear you. I'll tell you who we're not allergic uh, to, and that's Hall Communications. They are great partners of tourism, sports marketing, and uh, our first segment sponsor. We've got to say a lot about our uh, sister radio show, mm -hmm. Sports Central Radio Show on 1430 AM, 96.7 FM. And, of course, you can catch that every Thursday night from 5 to 6, one of the top-rated shows in all of Central Florida, believe it or not. And, uh, you know, got all the professionals, amateurs, mm -hmm. all about sports right here in Polk County. Absolutely. Make sure you tune it in, everybody. Well, Neil, we've got uh, a lot of stuff going on, and, and so many people have kind of transitioned now into the, the football, high school football, college mm -hmm. football, and, of course, everybody watches the Green Bay Packers. So, <laughs> Not you know, sure everybody does. Well, but, uh, whatever. But, <laughs> you know, but there are so many sports now that are starting to – kick off into their season as mm -hmm. well you know, swimming you know we've got uh, uh, basketball even you know some of the prelim stuff soccer yeah um, golf yeah starting to cool down just a little bit uh, the PGA starting back up again with their season albeit uh, a very long one starting to get like Major League Baseball yeah time. I think there was two weeks off of the PGA season yeah. it <laughs> seems like it's like hockey <laughs> yeah well one of the places that uh, I really enjoy playing a lot because uh, they really developed a really good business model out at Cypresswood, which is uh, in Winter Haven, right off of Dundee Road, 542. And uh, they, they, they have an opportunity. You can go out there, you can play nine holes. Right. You know, and the PGA, or the uh, uh, USGA, is really promoting this program, play nine. Mm -hmm. You know, and so many people just don't have the time to play 18, but still want to get out on the course. Right. You know, Cypresswood has done that. And so, you know, if you have a short window, you, Hustle on out there, grab grab your sticks, and uh, you know enjoy nine holes of golf, and you know just put them all together and develop your handicap. I'm not even sure if that's legal, but we're going to have to ask our very special <laughs> special it's guest not, over here. Be, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at least in the world of golf. You know, right. I know that you're a kind of a famous Texas foot wedge guy and a pencil whipper, but uh, <laughs> well, I believe all pencils should have erasers on them. So. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Anyway, Bob Shea, glad, <laughs> glad you could make it out here. I know you're a busy guy, and uh, there's a lot we want to talk to you about. There's a special event that you had on September 7th. Yes. And, uh, you know, a big uh, promotional efforts that's actually taking place over the entire course of September. Tell us a little bit about what's going on. Yeah, we participate uh, every year in the Patriot Golf Day uh, through that benefits the Folds of Honor Foundation which is a organization that provides scholarship dollars to the uh, families of veterans, fam you know, ve veterans' children to go mm -hmm. to college. Um, uh, Major Dan Rooney, who founded it, mm -hmm. is actually has a connection to Cypresswood. His grandfather used to play here uh, way back in the late, late and early 90s, um, okay. and he uh, founded this organization. It's a really, really good deal. Wow, that's... Uh you know, that's impressive. Folds of Honor, um, how long has that, that organization been around? Uh, since about 95 or so. 95? Right. Okay, uh, it, wow. uh, he started years. after he did a couple of uh, tours in Afghanistan, right. um, and uh, it really has benefited a lot of military families. So we're really proud to be partnering whatever way we can. And you can donate um, through the Pol Folds of Honor website through the end of the month as part of the Patriot Golf Day month. Well, there's so many terrific things about the sport of golf, um, but I, I think one of the things in, in talking about this event is the amount of money 
over the years that uh, various golf courses across the country have raised for charities because a lot of times you know uh, a fort or you know a scramble or an outing and this is a perfect example of why uh, or how golf can bring together community for a worthy cause yeah we um, had that scramble last Saturday had mm -hmm. 84 people and an event that started we started about five weeks ago raised over twenty three hundred dollars for them sent that check in Monday very honored to do that um, and everybody had a great time wearing their red white and blue and uh, supporting the USA so it was a really really good event well you know Bob one of the things that uh, uh, I think that Polk County Sports Marketing would be real interested in in talking with you about and of course Neil is the <coughs> director of, uh, of sports marketing and business development but there's been a big push into adaptive sports and uh, whether it's cognitive disability whether it's physical disability um, the adaptive sports or the disabled population is 19 percent of our entire U.S. population, wow, 19 percent, um, and when you start looking at you know the numbers of uh, people that impacts, um, probably the the group that um, we'd be most interested, or I should say, Neil would be most interested in, would be the disabled service members. Sure, and there's there's thousands and thousands of them, so I think that's something that uh, goes along with that and uh, time for you know another discussion another day but the Labor Day you know event itself was was a huge success yes, sir. for the rest of the month okay another two weeks or so what uh, what what can people expect how can they get involved how can they uh, benefit well there again go to their Folds of Honor website uh, there are events throughout the area they mm -hmm. can donate directly to the Folds of Honor campaign uh, there are scrambles being played all over Central Florida. So again, the website's the place to go to go. Cypresswood had its event, but we're continuing to support offering a place for people to drop off the donations if they aren't web savvy as some of our seniors are not. Uh, and we'll help them with that uh, for the rest of the month and going forward because they're collecting money all year round. I see here you're celebrating a 33 year anniversary at Cypress Foot and yeah, uh, yeah. I think a lot has probably changed over over those years the way that the sport has evolved and the technology uh, but it talks about uh, you only being one uh, one of few instructors in Central Florida certified in stack and tilt. What is stack and tilt? And then this follow-up question that is um, how are these different methods being uh, you know, approached with the younger golfs and, and yeah, golfers. That, you know, I, I started with Stack and Tilt about two and a half years ago. Stack and Tilt is a three-dimensional uh, description of the swing that's centered around ten words. Um, you know, weight forward, arms straight, hands in. You know, just some simple cues that help all golfers get better quickly. Um, I think I've 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 expanded that a little bit in my in my role as a golf pro by having, you know kids doing as young as two. Mm -hmm. I also have a 103 year old student. So that whole wide range of, uh, yeah. Your so, age group. So you got some, you, got, you, have, you, have, some, you have some hope. I was really hoping the camera was on me when I. <laughs> I figured yeah. I better get that out there before he did. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a really, really good program to get people not only started, but started successfully. As we right. all know who play, golf can be challenging. It can be difficult, uh, but this this format that we have that Andy Plummer and Mike and Mike Bennett uh, developed back in the early 90s really helps people get better faster, which is I think it's very important for all of us to enjoy the game more. Well, we're gonna have to get a list for you. you <laughs> <laughs> I promise I'm paying attention. Yeah, yeah, I, I'll, 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 I'll make you pay for the other four words. I gave, you six, <laughs> I gave you six for free. I'll give you the rest when you uh, when you sign up for the course. <laughs> you right. better charge and double. <laughs> well, and you talk about, and, and Mark alluded to it earlier, we're talking about Play 9 and, you know, uh, the general population's focus to be able to watch a sporting event for three and a half hours on TV or to go out and, and, and dedicate four hours. They have the time. They just 
just don't think they have the time, right. but dedicate four hours to playing around. Talk about the Play 9 and talk about how that addresses, uh, you know, infusing more uh, folks into the sport to make sure the continuity continues. Yeah, you know, we, we, we encourage people to play nine holes. We advertise that. We, we you know, try to get families together because what happens often is dad wants to play, play golf, but mom's got the kids, so we invite them all to come out. We ran a promotion during June and July where we allowed the family to go to the pool while dad could play golf to try to get more connectivity so it doesn't become a separation. It brings right. those families together. Uh, we're going to continue doing things like that. Allowing, we allow people to bring their spouses and ride along. A lot of golf courses charge for that. We don't do that. Uh, you know, we especially for those nine hole rounds that are smaller blocks at times when you've got a three or four year old there, sometimes the attention span can be a little short. So we want to, you know, we want to encourage that. And I think the USGA has done a pretty good job at telling people it's okay to play nine. They've allowed mm -hmm. us to handicap you based on nine holes. They've allowed us to you know, to, to institutionalize in our tee sheet. We have a partner with Easy Links, and Easy Links has a separate tee sheet for our nine hole tennis. So they're really starting to evolve that because people, like you said, they mm -hmm. have the time, they just don't think they do, and they, right. want to, they want to allocate it to certain features of their lifestyle. And we just have to make golf part of it so it can continue to grow and, and develop younger people in all ages, really. Well, you know, sunset now is, is around 7.30 or so, mm -hmm. 7.32 today, I guess, something like that. Um, and you can get off work and go play nine mm -hmm. and have a great time and then you come back into the clubhouse and, and like you have you know special nights where you have you know shuffleboard and bingo for for Neil and you or you know and and so you can play nine and then you can have dinner and and uh, you know I think even have trivia one night or so yeah we, we just we just have a new restaurant partner Southern Legacy Tap and Grill uh, Brooke Paul is the new proprietor she just came on at the beginning of August We're gonna have a grand opening towards the end of the month I think the 28th is the day the Saturday um, you know we yeah right that's kind of the thing get them for nine holes come in have a have a drink, have a meal, you know, have a great time, and just you know, obviously spend more time at Cypresswood. We we have three thousand residents in Cypresswood, mm -hmm. you know, so we have a good contained group of you know of young people and, and older people and buddies of yours, you know. <laughs> You know, I think yeah. that I think that those kind of things help people commit to us and we mm -hmm. want to commit to them. So that's yeah. what we're here for. Well, and I think the great thing about it, it's not only for residents of Polk County, but this fits a model as well for those families that are coming and going to Legoland right. or Bach Tower and, you know, keeping the family together. Uh, dad might go play golf or mom might go play golf and you have these other events associated with it. So it perfectly aligns not only for residents, but visitors to Polk County. Yeah, and it's Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's easy to get to, you know, just, it's right off of 27 and, and, you know, right there on the east side of Winter Haven, between Winter Haven and Dundee, and like I said, you know, I'm out there, you know, it's easy for me, I go out, you, know, you can play after dark, or not after dark, you know, sometimes I play after dark. <laughs> he plays better, he <laughs> yeah. plays better, it's out of sight, it's out of sight. Yeah, not, but, <laughs> gonna leave that one alone, but, uh, but anyway, it's a great opportunity, you know, break up your day or do whatever you want to do, so it's, uh, got a great business model out there, we're glad to see it. Yeah, and, we're and certainly for developing the sport of golf. Bob, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Mark. Um, Thank you, Neil. You know, yes, really, really a, a, a good time. Well, folks, we have a couple of interesting special features. We have, sort of have a walkthrough. You know, the Polk County Sports Hall of Fame is at Lake Myrtle, the Lake Myrtle Sports Complex. And as soon as you drive in Lake Myrtle right off of Berkeley Road, there's a huge building off to your right-hand side on the north side of the, uh, the entranceway there. And the Polk County Sports Hall of Fame. You know, you'll see NFL stars, you're going to see Major League Baseball stars, um, college stars, just all sorts of different people that have excelled in their area of expertise. At, some of them taking their voca avocation to a vocation. Long story short, we have some footage from that. We also have from the preeminent, I was going to say Polk Museum, the preeminent Arts Museum, mm -hmm. and that is the Polk Museum of Art in Lakeland. Check this out. Mark and Neil, we'll be back right after this. Champions, from the greens to the courts, the ballparks to the stadiums, 
from the open waters to back roads. Some of the greatest champions in sports hail from Polk County. Open to the public, the Polk County Sports Hall of Fame Museum is centrally located at Auburndale's Lake Myrtle Sports Park, displaying the trophies, jerseys, and memorabilia from Dreadnoughts, Blue Devils, Yellow Jackets, Mocks, Fire, and more. Come experience the legends of today and tomorrow. But let's not forget our unique connection to the water. More world records have been broken on Polk County lakes than anywhere else in the world. Come see where the legends live. Come visit the Polk County Sports Hall of Fame. Hello, I'm Jessica with Visit Central Florida and today we're in Lakeland at Polk Museum of Art at Florida Southern College. Here you'll enjoy exhibits, docent-led tours, workshops and classes, and even creative yoga. Let's take a tour. The Polk Museum of Art was founded by the Junior League, then known as the Junior Welfare League of Lakeland, in 1966. Uh, and uh, this was a group of women who just had a vision and believed that our community, meaning the Polk County community, really needed to have a museum. The Polk Museum of Art has always been a community museum, and so it's been devoted to providing great exhibitions to the members of the Lakeland community and the larger Central Florida community. With the affiliation with Florida Southern College, we now are thinking about it as a more academic style museum. That doesn't mean that what we've been doing is changing, we're only elevating what the programming will entail for everyone in the community. In 2010, the Polk Museum of Art became a Smithsonian affiliate museum. So while we bring in many new exhibitions that are are curated both from our own collection and from outside the institution. Our own permanent collection is broad and constantly expanding. I'm very happy to say that there is no cost to admission at the Polk Museum of Art. We have wonderful organizations who have underwritten admissions so that access to the museum uh, is, there are no barriers to access. The uh, Tin Sung and Wei Fang Cha Foundation, Mid Florida Credit Union, um, are two of our uh, strategic partners who have underwritten uh, admission to the museum as well as the SHARE Foundation. Uh, thanks to them, uh, we have experienced an increase in visitation by about 10,000 people over the last three years. We change up exhibitions typically every three months at the museum. And even while exhibitions are up at the museum, we invite people and encourage people to come back again and again to learn more from them. There is no way you can possibly cover everything we have on exhibition at any one time at the museum. We're making them more heavily didactic, more learning experiences that are rather intensive for viewers. So you can take a quick trip around an exhibition, or you can spend a lot of time looking and focusing on any one work or any one group of works. So people should come back many times over the course of one exhibition period, but we do typically change them up every three months, and you're gonna get a great variety of art from all around the world. So while we might have an exhibition up in the winter of all American artists, um, beside an artist like Renoir, um, whose works are among the most famous in the world, you might come back in the spring and you'll see Hudson River School landscapes. One of my favorite gift shops in Lakeland is right here in the museum. The shop at Polk Museum of Art has something for everyone, including birthday gifts, souvenirs, and that special gift for yourself. Remember, admission to Polk Museum of Art at Florida Southern College is always free thanks to their generous sponsors. I had a great time visiting today, and you will too. Hey everybody, welcome back to Sports Central. Mark Jackson, along with Neil Duncan, if you're just joining us, and a great interview with, uh, great visit with Bob Shade from Cypress Wood Golf and Country Club, Neil. And, you know, that's uh, that 10 step tilt and stack, right? <laughs> or stack and tilt? Yeah, I only know six of them. He wouldn't give me the rest. Yeah, you know, he's going to charge you for <laughs> that's them. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, but, that's, uh, that's good stuff. Speaking of golf, not too far from Cypress Wood is mm -hmm. one of our great partners supporting uh, this show and, yeah. and a number of other things that uh, Polk County Tourism and Sports Marketing is involved in. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, is the Country Club 
of Winter Haven. Yes, sir. Right? Oh, my gosh. Um, it's, uh, in fact, I think it's like a mile and a half, two miles north of Cypress Wood. But it's, it's right on the lake there, just a gorgeous. And they went, since they've redone that, mm -hmm. and it was in great shape, but it is just phenomenal shape right now. Well, you've seen the way I play golf. I have seen a lot of that course, so uh, it, it's a very nice course. <laughs> he plays gorilla golf. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not pretty. No. <laughs> it's not pretty, I'll be honest. <laughs> but anyway, um, Neil, we've got uh, some, you know, going from one star to another one. You know, the uh, Im Imperial Polk Aquatics team out of Haines City. Yeah. You know, a lot of people didn't even know that they had a swim team. Yeah, and joining us now, Jim Grazier, and thanks so much for coming on Sports Central, and we're excited to have this conversation with you about the, uh, this is the first year or the second year of the team? Uh, this is our second year. Okay. It's the Haines City Tritons. Uh, Polk Imperial Aquatics is uh, the LLC name, so. Right, okay. Uh, uh, the team there at Haines City at uh, Lake Eva uh, Community Park is the Haines City Tritons, so. Yeah, right. Just a little correction there. That's, yeah. uh, well, I'm used to being corrected, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that's a regular occurrence. But, uh, you know, the park there, the Lake Eva Park, is, is absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's home to the, uh, the Iron Man. It was home to uh, actually two of them last year, the yeah. Ford Iron Man, and, uh, and that was a full Iron Man, and then the 70.3. Yeah, so annually the half, and then last year the the full. The, the course, full uh, Panama after. City Beach was hit Her, the way they Michael. were, and and, uh, and the able Haines to. The Tritons, we uh, volunteered. Yeah, we did, yeah, uh, yeah. We were the first time around after the hurricane. Uh, we did the uh, bike station. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, coming out the first time on that, that was a real experience. And then the last time, the half, the seventy point three, we did the uh, uh, the run station towards the end. So. Uh, we enjoy volunteering and providing the service for the uh, for the Iron Men, and and uh, it's a great experience for our team to get out there and help with that and see those tremendous athletes go by. And I believe that we're going to have we had one Iron Man from our team, uh, Karen Tyner, was in it last year. This year we may have two wow. people entering that 70.3 in April, and we'll be there supporting them uh, at one of the stations, whatever uh, wherever they need us. So. Uh, we look forward to the Ironman. It's been a great uh, kind of an addition to our team, and we uh, some of our kids uh, participate in the Kid Ironman in the in, during the morning, where they do the uh, the swim in the pool, and then mm -hmm. they run along the lake and back, and and uh, they've earned themselves some medals and some podium stands, and we are just super excited to be a part of the Ironman there in Haines City. Well, I think it. I think you hit on a number of things, and the first one is how important it is that uh, you know Sports Central to be on the air. And we thank our partners at PGTV because bringing guests on and talking about the events that are going on in Polk County, because you're talking about the relationship between this event that's coming up, the Heart of Florida Invitational Meet on September 21st, mm -hmm. but you were talking about the volunteerism uh, at the, the Ironman, and that's mm -hmm. one of the neat things about Polk County is how everybody comes together to make sure that these are uh, successful events, rememberable events, uh, memorable events for our participants and spectators coming in, and that's a perfect mm -hmm. example of it, so, so thank you. But looking at your event, uh, the Heart of Florida Invitational meet on September 21st at Lake Eva. Uh, what does that look like? I know there's teams coming in from all over mm -hmm. the place and being in your second year, I'm sure there's some lessons you learned after year one that uh, that will go into this meet. Um, first of all, I just want to say what a gem it is down there at Lake Eva. Mm -hmm. The pool is spectacular, the vi venue is spectacular, it's like none other. It's got a huge um, deck space, sh plenty of shade, um, it, it's just uh, uh, fans and lights over, uh, you know, where spectators might sit and have lunch or whatever. And then also the water park uh, is a, a big aspect of that venue. The staff there couldn't be more friendly and helpful for our team. Uh, it's because of that staff and the, uh, the accommodations that we got from Haines City Parks, Parks and Recs and the approval of the City Commission for us to be there that uh, it was quite a process and yes, it was a learning process, but uh, we're entrenched now. We have uh, 41 swimmers from our team entered in the swim meet. Uh, we're super excited about that. Uh, I have a total of eight teams participating. There will be eight teams participating, Crystal River, Vero Beach, Claremont, 
uh, Highlands, uh, down in Sebring, mm -hmm. Lakeland, all these teams are coming together kind of in a central location, Kissimmee, mm -hmm. and uh, it kind of uh, the heart of Florida is really what it is because we're going to be right there in the middle and these teams are gravitating towards uh, to enter the swim meet um, geared towards age groupers. And, well, what age? Uh, well, it's range, uh, it'll range from age, uh, I may have a 50 year old, but I'm not sure yet. But uh, uh, the, it, it <laughs> basically, <laughs> it's basically five to 18 years old. It's an age group, it's uh, kind of like on a B level, so it's gonna be very friendly towards um, uh, introductory type competition for uh, that level of swimming. Uh, some may say it's a B meet. We just like to say the uh, invitational swim meet. But uh, we'll have 140 swimmers coming from these eight teams that wow. have been personally invited by me to be there to, uh, to celebrate this big event with us. Because it will be historical. It'll be the first event uh, swim meet held at that, uh, USA sanctioned swim meet to be held at that venue. So we're super excited. Our families are super excited. The coaches are. We just can't wait for it to, uh, hopefully we get some good weather and we'll be off and running uh, next Saturday on the 21st. Well, and I think, just going back real quick, one more time to Lake Kiva, you know, the, the central location and all that, and a uh, perfect example, you know, a relationship with uh, the Ironman event, your events, uh, the Scripps National Regional Spelling Bee there last year, and a number of events, and, and again, the location and proximity to attractions is good. but. Uh, mm -hmm. I get excited about that kind of thing, but uh, well, there's a wonderful event center. I didn't know the spelling bee was there, but is yeah. that where the oh, yeah. events was? Yeah. That where it was? That's mm -hmm. a wonderful venue for an event center. And if nobody's sure. been down to Lake Eva Park. It's a real treat. There's constantly activity going around. Yeah, they have a, a mile track around where you walk around a lake, mm -hmm. or through the neighborhoods, over hills and down. And I walk it about every day. And uh, uh, it's just wonderful. I mean, uh, there's your constantly, I'm at the pool coaching, I'll look up, people are walking, running, pushing, you know, their baby strollers. It's so yeah. friendly towards athletics that uh, it's, it's uh, warming to go there and see the number of people that are uh, using the facility for fitness and health. Well, I know we've been happy to partner for a long, long time, but anyways. Yeah, well, no question about it. You know, and, and Jim, the, the Triton's been around, uh, this is the second year. Yes. Sir. So you're growing that program, but you've been a certified swim coach since 1984. Correct. Or somewhere in that neighborhood. Right. We'll, well just say that's right. Exactly or, right. I had, I uh, was with, uh, yeah, that's right. So, you know, that's a long time, and I know you, you coached a lot of uh, champions throughout the years. If you look forward to where the Tritons are now, what's the prospect? I, you know what, I've, I'm looking at, you, uh, teams are built from the bottom up. It's, mm -hmm. uh, you start, if you don't have good coaches at the bottom levels, novice, developmental, beginner, mm -hmm. uh, it's a process, it becomes a lifestyle for many families, and those kids will progress into, uh, you know, the high school level. So I'm, I'm really looking, and I was talking to one of the coaches yesterday about this, that uh, down the line, all these swimmers that we saw in the pool yesterday, all these young athletes, these competitors, the ones that'll be in the swim meet, they'll be in the high school ranks in, you know, five or six short years. So my prospect is I think Central Florida, because of the Tritons, is the high school level of swimming will be greatly improved because of the program that we established there. So I'm excited for the future of swimming in Polk County, especially in uh, uh, the Haines City area with uh, uh, Ridge Community and Haines City High mm -hmm. School and mm -hmm. um, just really happy for uh, what's going to be happening for that area when these swimmers, you know, become more refined at what they do and the competition level steps up a little bit down the road. Fantastic. And, and you made a mention, you were saying that it's, uh, it may be a, did you say like a B-level meet or something like that? But I think it's important to talk about that because it doesn't always have to be the the varsity or the division one or the professional, there's competition at multiple levels and multiple skill sets for everyone. And I think it's important uh, the, the, the point that you made about it may be not this, but there's a lot of people coming in for this and, and, and everybody needs that you, opportunity. You've got to make it a tremendous experience for the young kids mm -hmm. to want to stay in. Swimming is a grueling right. sport. It's a difficult sport. If you ever try to jump in and swim 100, you'll know what I'm talking about. 
Um, the, uh, but yeah, we want them, we want these kids to be excited. It's all about fun to begin with and then they may have a future in the sport down the line. So that's pretty much our presentation. At this, at this time of year, September, high school swimming has kicked off. Mm -hmm. So um, the younger kids need a place because there's a lot of coaches tied in with high school swimming at this point. And uh, we will get high school swimmers uh, attending, but pretty much that age group right now is pretty locked into their um, high school swimming. But uh, it'll be a great experience. They even purchased a backdrop. I've been noticing everywhere you see, you see backdrops here, there, you know, with their interviewing football players or whatever. So mm -hmm. went online, looked it up. I've got a backdrop for a podium stand so that the kids can step up on the stand and take a picture and, That's great. you know, Every picture that goes out on Facebook is great advertisement for um, for the Haines City Tritons, and uh, there will be a little bell there if they have a personal best, so they'll have a chance to ring that bell, and hopefully it'll be ringing all day. Well, that, that's good stuff. And one of the things before we let you go here, we've got uh, just like ten seconds left. The uh, from the Haines City area, Davenport area, and you want to get in or Dundee, whatever. <clears throat> you want to get involved with the Tritons. How can they get more information? Website, HaynesCityTritons.com. All the information's right there. And come down to the pool. Come for a visit. Free tryouts uh, at any time during any um, practice that we have. And uh, all, all are welcome. We have a fantastic, we have fantastic families. We're so mm -hmm. happy with our families and uh, the spirit of the team that uh, we can't say more. But I know we have 10 seconds, but I brought you both a gift, the Haines oh. City Tri, I mean, a uh, Heart of Florida Invitational oh, T-shirt. Thank you. Very nice, thank and, you very uh, much. I'd like for you to have that and wear it proudly. And Appreciate it. Glad to give it to you. September 21st, coming up. Yeah. It's open to the public. Come and see what swimming's all about. Lake Eva Sports and con Sports Complex and Convention Center, beautiful place. If you haven't been there, make sure you do it. Lake Eva. Uh, convention center and yeah. aquatic, center. Uh, aquatic center and uh, swim park it's just phenomenal <laughs> phenomenal place check it out everybody well one of the things that we uh, are so excited about as well is some of the superstars that eventually go from B swim teams or B football teams all the way up the ranks to the mm -hmm. professional level one mm -hmm. of those guys Polk County native Mr. Ray Lewis well we had a special unveiling of his exhibit at the Polk County Sports Hall of Fame. We have some great footage from that. And don't forget everybody, he, Harry's Seafood, with the coldest drinks in town, <laughs> Harry's Seafood Bar and Grill, right across from Munn Park in downtown Lake, and this segment sponsor. Well, check this out every, well, we have one yeah. more thing too. So after we uh, see the feature on Ray Lewis, we're also gonna see a feature, our athlete spotlight on Zach Hallman uh, from Frostproof High School. He was an adaptive athlete in track and field last year. In fact, he was at the Polk County All Sports that's Awards. Right. I think he won three state championships. So we're gonna take a look at that as well. And all that's gonna happen, and we'll, then we'll be right back. We'll be right back with the latest and the greatest in Polk County. Stick around, everybody. Thanks guys, Neil Duncan here for Sports Central and what a privilege I have right now. I've got number 52 with me, Ray Lewis. Ray, welcome back to Polk County. Yeah man, always good to be home. Here at the Polk County Sports Hall of Fame, of course uh, there's a big image of you b back there and we're getting ready to unveil the, the newest exhibit here at the Polk County Sports Hall of Fame, but let's go back to August 4th, the induction into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. What was that moment like? Well, I think it was, it was probably one of the greatest moments ever when you talk about from just a dream right what does that dream look like and so when you finally get there man it's like it's you're in a dream because you're seeing some of the greatest legends of all time that you watch grow up when you was growing up and and then when you get there you're like well guess what you're not watching them anymore like you're actually a part of the team and so it's a it's a very it's a special thing because you're invited into something that's it's a one-time thing and it's forever you can never get cut you, you can never be taken <laughs> down and none of that can happen and so it's a it's one of those things man that you sit back from a child and you say did i actually accomplish that mm -hmm. like am i sitting here really and and just experiencing it with my family and my daughter and my friends and and everybody man it was it was probably one of the greatest sports achievements ever that took me to the next level honestly yeah 
I was just getting ready to say, I could go through all the achievements that you accomplished over your career, but we only have an hour show, so we're not going to go through all those. Uh, but talk about the Super Bowls. Talk about the MVP. Talk about those, you know, going out on top. What did that mean to you? Yeah, you know what? I tell you what, man. Um, and, and I think one of the greatest things for me was I tell guys this all the time. Me being in Baltimore for 17 years, it, wow. I mean, there's, first of all, there's, I would never, ever put on another uniform. And to win championships the way we've done in Baltimore, to give Art Modell his first ring, mm -hmm. right? To, to, to witness going through a 12 year stretch and then coming back and tearing my tricep and like, okay, what's next? Mm -hmm. And then I'm on the goal line with my back against the wall and we're like, I got four plays yeah. <laughs> the this rest of my career. Like, this is it. So I'm like, okay, wow, perfect, perfect ending, right? But then I'm looking, saying to myself, like, sometimes a lot of times you have to go through things to get there. And I think as a team, we matured. I think we matured along the way. And the city matured, man, to, to go, oh, my gosh, if you just saw the airports coming back home. And it's just, it's amazing because those memories never leave your head. Mm -hmm. So anytime, anytime I see confetti drop, anybody sees confetti, my head just tingles because I can never forget that moment that the last time I strapped up my cleats, right. I went out as a champion. Yeah. So much talent out of Polk County, obviously one of the greatest ever out of Polk County, uh, number 52. But if you had a message to the, the youngsters growing up in this county, uh, trying to follow in your footsteps, what, what would it be? Yeah, dream big. Dream big. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot, of, a lot of us give up because of our environments, you know. But sometimes your environments are actually there to actually push you, mm -hmm. you know. And I think kids, you know, we don't have the things perfect, right? Nothing, nothing in life will ever be perfect. And so, but, but we don't, the imagination doesn't expand anymore. Like, open up your mind, just like, and dream so big. At 14 years old, I dreamed big. I was like, I'm leaving Lakeland, and when I come back, I'm going to have this, 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 and this. And not just, not that I just said it, I wrote it down. I put it in my Bible. I prayed about it daily, daily, daily. So, so I wasn't blindly walking right I was I was walking purely by faith because I knew what I had prayed about I knew what I had promised my mom I knew what I had promised my brothers and sisters and and when you promise that then you have something to always chase the rest of your life and and, and, and it's necessarily not sports right it's not just a tackle it's not just a pro bowl it's purpose and man I'm telling you like I I want this moment, and this is why I told all of Polk County, I want this moment to inspire hundreds of thousands of Ray Lewis's who are sitting there and don't know how they're going to figure it out. Maybe daddy gone. Maybe situations ain't right at home. But you can still figure it out. But you got to have a plan. And, and, that's the, and that's the new thing, man. So I think that's my, that's my theme the whole weekend. Like, and that's, I've been preaching this message for a while. Dream big, but dreaming big means you got to do some work too. You know, like you got to put in a lot of work because a lot of things going to line up for you. But if you ain't in the proper alignment and ready to put in work, then it falls on deaf ears. Well, now I'm here with Coach Joe. And of course, uh, Coach, you've, uh, you've been in this county a long, long time, but you were there at the beginning of a wonderful career of Ray Lewis. Yes, sir. Uh, kind of hitting home now. Um, I was in Canton a couple weeks ago for the ceremony. And uh, just coming full circle, he was a great kid, uh, hardworking kid. He said something today that I, I try to tell children, talent doesn't win at all times, but the effort, you, you, you know, and that's what, he, that's what he gave. He always gave that extra, extra effort. And if he told you he could do something, he could do it. And um, his senior year, he convinced me to uh, let him get on the offensive side of the ball, let him return um, uh, pump returns and kick returns. He said, Coach, I can help you more. And I tell you what, he just opened up our, our offensive game and uh, just, just made a memorable season there. We only lost one game that year, but he's just a hard worker. Uh, just very proud of him. Uh, he's, he's a guy that uh, always every now and then just come papa how you doing you know don't forget where he comes from so that's a blessing too so just i'm i'm just uh i'm old today and just a little emotional but just exciting catching up now with eddie george and uh, a great college career great nfl career but now you're in polk county supporting ray lewis talk to us about that 
Yeah, I uh, came down this weekend to support my brother. You know, I've known Ray for a very long time, going back to college. And, uh, of course, through our playing days, we've um, always had a unique friendship off the field, but on the field it was complete, complete enemies. Uh, but just tremendous respect for what he's done, um, who he is, both on the field and away from the field, and uh, who, he's, who he's becoming. And um, it's, it's just that, that, that love and respect that's always there. And to come back to where it all began for him, it all kind of makes sense on how he ended his uh, Hall of Fame career, his humble beginnings, what he had to go through. I mean, it's just phenomenal to come back and to see the love that he has here in his old hometown. So just wanted to come here and support and uh, also to learn. So it's, it's been, it's been insight, insightful. Well, before I let you go, I got to know, he hits pretty hard, right? Uh, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about the, the camaraderie and the, the friendships and really families that are built within the National Football League. Obviously, you have a close relationship with Ray Lewis, uh, but it extends beyond that, right? Oh, it, it is. It's about life. It's, a, it's about um, understanding you know, who we are as men and who we're trying to become and coming together collectively to, to create change to inspire one another, um, to cultivate and... Um, I hope uh, he's telling y'all <laughs> well, I, well, actually... Nice. Yeah, actually, I'm still I, having headaches. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, Ray, I actually asked him, I said, so he hits pretty hard, right? And he's like, nah. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, oh, yeah. no, no. I still feel the effects of that. This, this, this one right here, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, man, when you, when you think about old school, old school, he made me better. We made each other better. And that's why I think we became such great friends. You know, the first Pro Bowl, I won't tell the story. I'm going to keep oh, the story between us. Keep it clean. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, that's, that's what I'm saying. It, it truly is um, the camaraderie. You see it right there. Right. We go way back to things off the field, on the field. Um, but again, it's funny, like when you turn the switch on and, and he has on his Ravens uniform, I have on my Titans uniform and the lights go on, it's a completely different demeanor. It's, it's, it's like no other. And you go at each other for 60 minutes and, it's n and every hit that he tries to lay on you is not just to make the hit, but he tries to take you out of commission and make a statement. So that's what makes him a great player. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's celebration of perhaps the greatest middle linebacker ever to play the game. You know what? Forget that. We're in Polk County. He is the greatest middle linebacker to ever play the game, right? It doesn't hurt that he's a native son of Polk County, so there is that, right? My name is Neil Duncan, Senior Business Development Manager for Polk County Tourism Sports Marketing. Of course, I'm part of the Board of County Commissioners. And I know we have uh, numerous county officials here today. Uh, the Sheriff's Department is here, as well as uh, city officials from many locations in Polk County, as well as school board uh, superintendent and school board members. Let's give them a round of applause for all that they do for our county. <laughs> Today will be a day filled with memories as this caravan stops at multiple locations around the county. We here at Polk County Sports Hall of Fame are honored to kick the day off. We thought it was important to give it this small uh, community event type feel before Ray starts encountering more and more and more of his uh, uh, adoring fans. I do appreciate members from the Auburndale High School team for coming out this morning. We know it's early, guys. We appreciate you coming out. But the high school fields in this county have unmatched talent. I think we see it year in and year out. And of course, the greatest ever, he's here today. And I'm talking about number 52, Ray Lewis. I walked into a gold jacket luncheon, and it was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. I'm sitting there, and to my right is Dick Buckus. To my left is Lawrence Taylor. To Willie Lanier. I'm Jim Kelly. I'm like, wait a minute. And then I'm sitting there, and I'm not dreaming. And then it's Joe Namath. And I'm saying, wait a minute, man. This kid from Lakeland is sitting in this room with those legends? Then God had a real plan. And when God got a plan, I promise you, he will come through with what he promises. But there's some work that gotta be done to, uh, with that though. There's some work gotta be done with it. And that's why I'm glad to be walking back on home. We were sitting in that lobby the other day and I'm telling guys, this was the path. Terrence, you remember? This was the path I ran every night. Every night. Coach Lineberger, you know the, you know the routine. Coach Joe, 
Coach Poole, the way Coach Poole trained me on the wrestling mat, man, I cannot imagine what that looked like again. I'm telling Eddie, I don't know if I can run that many times no more. And what Coach Joe did for me as a father, as a role model, as just a man, you guys, you molded me. So before anybody else got me, I was already a man, a man that with morals. And then my greatest inspiration in my life outside of God is my mother. So life for me to come back now, I told you this. I told you this at 10 years old when I struck down a jet dress and I said, we will make it. And I will get us out of here. But now we're coming back to pay it forward. That's why we're here. And the only reason I, I, I got to come do this is because I want a kid to leave here today. I want somebody to hear this message that's sitting home, that's giving up hope, that don't have a father, that don't have an economics around them, that's growing up in poverty, and can still say, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. So listen, thank you guys. I'm telling you from the Polk County Hall of Fame to the Sheriff's Office to everybody who came out, every brother that came out this weekend, every, I mean, every intimate moment means something. It means something. And we must pay it forward because our kids, whether we don't understand it or not, let's keep saying it, our kids are our future. And we got to show them what hard work looks like. That's the only reason I'm saying to you, baby boy, like even if you wanted to go against me, man, you got to die for that opportunity. Because I will. <laughs> you see? Yeah. And then if you beat me one time, you got to beat me 10 more times. <laughs> it ain't going to end. And you're going to be like, man, this dude crazy. But, that's, but you got to be a little crazy to do some things great sometimes. At this time, we'd like to unveil our newest exhibit here at the Polk County Sports Hall of Fame. We certainly don't have a gold jacket or, or the bust like they have up there in Canton. Uh, but I believe Hank Long has done a terrific job with this exhibit as we celebrate your induction to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So you'll do the honors. We'll just pull in that front part a little bit. Don't pull hard. There we go. All right, everybody give it up for number 52, Ray Lewis. Well, the Polk County Sports Hall of Fame newest exhibit, the Ray Lewis exhibit, is open now. Uh, the museum is open Tuesday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Please join us out here. Um, I was born with the um, birth defect called spina bifida. Sometimes when people look at us, they say, oh, you can't do all these things, and you can't do this and that, but we really can. It's just you do it in a different way. We learned that Zach was gonna be coming to Frostproof Middle Senior High School um, as a sixth grader and knew that there was some adaptive opportunities for him inside of you know, the track and field sport, that he could be able to compete in the district, regional, and state level. Being that we're a middle school, high school, it was a great opportunity for him to come and be able to participate all the way up through the state championships. When I came here, one of the teachers told me about it, and so I just decided to come out and try it, and so, and then I, when I came out, I really got hooked on it. It just, it keeps me active and going and in shape and just active. When I first was starting to coach Zach, I took the same approach as if I were to coach my regular athletes. Um, with repetitions and um, basically training him to, with his stamina um, and getting him to try to get his times to get lowered by um, timing the repetitions that we would do on the track. Yeah, we, um, we practice after school and we just do a, a whole bunch of laps to keep my endurance going and then we do starts to keep me in, um, fast starts and then do some sprints and stuff like that. Well, Coach Wood, he got me started first. He, you know, helped me get going and he was, he's a good coach and I like him a lot. And then when my uncle came here, he's been a mentor and 
just helps me keep going and pushes me a lot. When you go to a track meet and you're the only adaptive athlete there, um, that might be a difficult thing to be able to compete at a higher level at those kind of meets. Um, but once he gets up to the um, state meet, he's able to find some competition there, um, as well as outside of uh, the high school um, you know, scene where he can go to like AAU or club track and adaptive track um, outside of the high school that he can compete in that he'll find more competition at. But on the high school setting, high school level, that's probably one of the things that I saw the most. Well, he definitely brings a fresh perspective because I think he's facing that the hardest battle and that's coming out there every practice and still working hard. And that, that's an inspiration um, because you're not beating somebody out for a spot. You're working hard to prove to yourself that you deserve to be out here. And there was plenty of days where we sat down and he talked and I talked and he wants to be out here and you know, it's not easy. It's not easy to show up, sweat and bleed and shed some tears just to prove a point. But he's laying the foundation, he's laying that path so that next adaptive, adaptive athlete comes out here and does the same thing. What I would love to see is that he is that trailblazer that more schools have the adaptive programs. I'm a special education teacher, so I know there's plenty of special education and adaptive athletes already in the schools. I would love to see them out there next year. When I go to meets, I'm the because I'm the only one that is in a wheelchair. I, I'm the only one that races on the track. I race by myself every meet until I get to state. For me, it's you know just the willingness to keep going because I don't have any competition all year so it's hard to just keep going and you know push yourself more. I look at all the you know state records and I when I push myself to try to beat them every year and so it just keeps me going. What I hear a lot too and I think some people are like oh that's nice. It's not all oh, that's nice. You don't say that about the sprinters. You know, that's an athlete out there, right there, that could probably beat you in any other sport. He just, he does it differently. So the misconception is good for him. It's not good for him. His times get better. His distance and throwing gets better. And that's his hard work. Um, so I guess if somebody's watching him, don't feel sorry for him. Because he, he was out there working as you were in air condition, enjoying your day off. You know, cheer him on, absolutely. Um, it's all about inclusion. You walk through the hallways, you go to Publix, you see any of these things, people with disabilities all around. Uh, just It makes us feel comfortable to kind of put them in a different category. When you see an athlete come out here that does it differently than everybody else, and he's good at it, it kind of makes you accept him and accept the next athlete. So when you see the other athletes competing uh, that are competing with disabilities, they're just like you and I, you know, they're gonna have those stories you know, talking to their kids later on, oh, I did this when I was younger, and I did it in 110 degree weather. And, um, so I think it's really important, any athlete out there that wants to come out, show what you got, show it, make the sport bigger. I would like to go to college after school and do track in college and hopefully get to the Paralympics too. I like sports, so I kind of want to be like a sports commentator or something like that. If your school has adaptive athletes, get them out there. It's not easy and it's gonna be a struggle, but uh, they deserve it, you know. Make them interested in school by getting them interested in after school. Hey everybody, welcome back to segment number four of Sports Central. I'm Mark Jackson, Neil Duncan to my right, to your left on your television viewing screen, for those of you that are directionally impaired. And you know, Mr. Duncan, two very special guests, and you really did a great job with that inter that last interview with Ray Lewis. He's, well, big, he's a big dude. It, it, yeah, and, and big and hands. Eddie George was there too, had a long career, of course played at Ohio State, hey. and a number of celebrities, but uh, it, it is amazing when you look around this county all sports, all levels, the amount of talent that comes out of Polk County, and that's just an example of it. So, as you were seeing there, the Polk County Sports Hall of Fame, as you mentioned earlier in the show, at the Lake Myrtle Sports Park. We want to invite everybody out to check it out. Absolutely. Well, one of, uh, you know, we were talking about a little bit earlier yeah. about Harry's Seafood Bar and Grill mm -hmm. in downtown Lakeland, but uh, 
in Winter Haven, well, also in Lakeland, we have ovations. Yeah. And Joel and Fernando yep. um, do a great job there. Man, they've got some great uh, specials coming out of there, too. And the barbecue, good food. the ribs are as good as anything. Very so, good food. Absolutely great stuff, everybody. Make sure you check them out. Ovations in Winter Haven on Cypress Gardens Boulevard and in Lakeland on South Florida. I was going to say Florida South. <laughs> South Florida, Florida Southern, Avenue, that's right. South Florida. Well, every everyone, we've got so much going on here in Polk County. And it used to be September, we'd have one or two events, three events, maybe four. Um, it's a traditionally slow time. In fact, it's a great time to go on vacation, get great rates. But now, September, at least in Central Florida's Polk County, slam-packed with sporting events. In fact, today, Friday the 13th, when we're doing this show, mm -hmm. We have a big, big cross-country race out at Holloway Park in Lakeland, and that's really become a hotbed, Neil. Absolutely, the Holloway Jamboree. It's uh, elementary and middle school, and it's kind of a tune-up. Uh, there's a number of events that are going to be going on out there, and uh, it is uh, one of the premier, if not the premier, cross-country venues in the state of Florida. You know, the, the facility in Tallahassee, Florida State has is pretty good, but uh, we're right there with them. Uh, but a great event that's starting. Uh, we also have this weekend the Global Sports Alliance Baseball September Showdown. Uh, those are uh, baseball players from eight years old to 14 years old. Uh, great event there at the Chain Links Complex. In well, another, we've got two baseball events, don't we? Yeah, we've got a few of them, actually. A perfect game, uh, youth season opener. This is 40 or 50 teams that will be coming into the Lake Myrtle Sports Park, uh, U16 or U13 up to uh, U16. Uh, we also have another uh, couple of softball events. What? Why are you laughing? <laughs> Keep going. Oh, okay. No, I was just... Oh, I know what you're going to do. <laughs> the Pro-Am 50 Softball <laughs> Tournament, September 14th and 15th. I Walker, did it up for you. <laughs> Walker Road Softball Complex. This is a over 50 uh, men's softball tournament. Um, you wouldn't qualify because you're well past that. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> that event will be going on. And then we also have the United States Fast Pitch Association. Uh, they have an event coming up September 14th and 15th. That's... Uh, I believe at the Bartow 555 complex. That's a four-game tournament, um, 8 to 12, 14, 16s, and 18, so a great event. Well, did you write this script? Because everything's it seems to be Bartow here now. You want to just keep going with the tour to toe? Nope. That's really a cool event. Yeah, it is. It's uh, September 21st, uh, 7 a.m. to 3 uh, p.m. Registration is from 7 to 8. The Tour de Toe is Bartow's annual cycling event and offers a 17-mile family fun ride, which I don't understand those words. I don't it's an more. I don't drive 17 miles and think it's fun. But, <laughs> um, they also have a 35-mile road tour, a 65-mile road tour, and this is through some of uh, Polk County scenic back roads. Uh, and they have all kinds of, of great uh, events go along with a kids race and things like that. Yeah, and snacks along the way. You gotta have snacks. Absolutely. Well, last year, if, if you want me to keep on going with Bartow. Keep, keep on going with Bartow last because year, Herbert Dixon. Yeah, the oldest inductee into ever into the Polk County Sports Hall of Fame at 99 in a few days. Yep. He is getting ready to turn 100 in conjunction with the 100th anniversary of the Bartow Golf Course. They're going to have an event on September 21st uh, to celebrate both of those and have an outing. So it's pretty neat stuff going on over there. You can give Chris Banks a call 863-533-9183. To, so, to be a part of those events. Herbert Dixon's a funny guy. Take oh, your money too. Oh, listen, go to the Bartow Golf Course, ask him where Herbert Dixon is, and then go challenge him. If you're 20 or you're 80, he's going to take your money because he still plays really, really well. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were talking a little bit earlier in the show about the big push into adaptive sports. And, you know, the U.S. population I mentioned earlier is 19 percent, either cognitive or physical disabilities. And it's a big push for Polk County sports marketing to get into that and do more with that market. One of the uh, sports segments been really, really fortunate to, uh, to be involved in is water skiing. So we're going to deal more with that uh, the next show, Neil, but right now we've got some sponsors to thank. Yeah, that event is September 28th and you'll hear more about it, but we want to thank Cleveland Heights Golf Club, Echo Suites, The Ledger, People's Barbecue, with their back open, and the Hampton Inn Winter Haven, some of our great partners. Don't forget everybody, our next live show will be September 27th. So many thanks go to the PGTV. Uh, such a professional crew. We're so grateful to have them. Hey, and one thing I did forget to mention is on September 28th, 
the Cypress Gardens Water Ski Team Adaptive Water Ski Event. Talked a lot about adaptive, didn't mention the specific event. September right. 28th, make sure you go check it out. If you have adaptive friends or family members, this is a great way to get involved in America's family sport, and that is the sport of water skiing. It'll be at Lake Silver in Winter Haven. So make sure that you check that out. Another great day, another great week in September. We've been blessed by uh, getting Absolutely. missed by Dorian. Yeah. I think uh, things are looking pretty good from here on out, everybody. So thanks so much for joining us. This is Mark Jackson for Neil Duncan. Thanks for joining us on Sports Central, and we'll see you again September 27th.